Greetings, cyber dogs and citizens of the internet. This is Rendog coming at you from the Grove Delivery Line in this Let's Play Minecraft Survival Series. In the previous episode, we were preparing the foundations for the lumber mill in the Viking district of Mole City. And in this episode, my friends, we are going to be getting technical up in here. And we are going to be installing an automatic sorting system so that all of the items we are receiving from the Grove are going to be automatically sorted into the lumber mill. It is going to be absolutely awesome. I hope you guys have something tasty to sip on. I've got some tea. Give me a second. Mm. And I hope you got something crunchy to snack on. I don't have anything to snack on, of course, because then you would hear me munching away. But anyway, guys, let's play some Minecraft Survival. Oh my goodness, I am so freaking excited about today's episode, my friends. I have been preparing for this for about two hours off camera, and I just can't wait to get going. Unfortunately, I've had a rather busy weekend. It is now Sunday night that I'm recording this. Um, I had a very busy weekend. I was having lunch with numerous people. Um, I had to go and have lunch with my boss, and I was hanging out with some friends. Why do I have to go see other humans when I could just stay at home and play Minecraft? I ask you guys. Anyway, all good. I'm back home playing Minecraft just where I like to be, man. And as you guys can see, a lot has changed around here since the previous episode. Oh, and by the way, guys, at the end of today's episode, we're going to be heading up to the Dogolith to get a few more of you guys added. I know that it's been a while. So for those of you guys who've been asking, do not worry. Dogolith entries at the end of today's episode. But as you guys can see, what I have had to do is raise the final section of the Grove delivery line here by about five blocks. This took me about 40 minutes or so to do to try and work this jazz out and uh, yeah the whole thing is now looking finalized the reason that I had to raise it is because I've been doing a little bit of um, testing and figuring out exactly how we're going to be storing installing this automatic storage facility and I think we're going to actually need quite a lot of space and we also need a little bit of height too in order to get this installed so I had to move the whole thing up a little bit but I think it still looks pretty damn snazzy and of course, it means that um, we're going to find a, a really cool way to build, I don't know, almost like a chimney or something here in this position. Because of course, this thing is now coming into the building that we're going to be making here. So we're going to have to find a really cool way to hide this thing. Now, what in the jazz are we doing today, my friends? Well, let me try and explain myself. It's kind of complicated, okay? Um, well, where to start? All right, let's start from the very beginning. What in the jazz are we currently trying to achieve? Well, currently, this project has morphed from just setting up a, a better grove system over there to get logs, leaves, saplings, vines, and apples. And it's kind of evolved into a giant automation project, which has actually been awesome. We've managed to make an automatic grove that delivers all of its stuff via ice aqueducts into an auto loader, which loads a minecart and then sends that minecart along this delivery railway line. And the last piece of the puzzle, of course, is to get all of the items out of that chest cart that is delivered from the grove and into um, individual chests inside of this lumber mill. So essentially, what we are going to be trying to achieve today is setting up a facility where we can have a chest for each of the things that we can get for the grove, uh, from the grove. So for example, a chest for spruce logs, a chest for dark oak wood logs, etc. Then chest for all of the different leaves, chest for all of the different saplings, and then a chest for apples and vines, and then anything else that might um, come out of um, the grove. So we have to find a way to sort those items automatically and we are going to be doing that with some redstone and I think and this might be famous last words as usual I think I have it all figured out in my brain exactly how this redstone build is going to work out so I want to get cracking before I actually forget <laughs> about how this whole thing is set up but before I do let's quickly just chat about what uh, I want to do with regards to blocks in this build. This is the Viking district over here. The reason it's called the Viking district is because it's a sort of snowy area of Mole City. And I want to try and uh, use a pretty cool block configuration that we haven't used in the series before. And I'm thinking about, let's build like a little block chart over here, right? Just to have a look at what we're working with. I'm thinking about using um, check it out. We'll use some dark oak wood planks, some acacia planks, which I think are pretty cool. Then I would like to use some birch wood planks also. I kind of want to make the whole lumber, uh, lumber mill out of wood. I think that'd be pretty cool. And I've also been thinking about using some polished diorite. We've collected a bunch of diorite and we've made some polished diorite too, which is awesome. And we haven't used it anywhere yet. So this to me feels like a pretty cool block palette. 
um, for the lumber mill. And of course, we're going to have to use a few logs also. And I think um, using dark oak wood logs might be pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I think I think that's a pretty cool palette. We're going to have to find clever ways to use this, though, I think. Um, but anyway, this is what I'm going to start with. We can always change it if it doesn't turn out okay. Um, but yeah, let's get going. Mm. All right, Cyberdogs, I am ready to go. Tea has been delivered to the butthole. My brain is in full freaking gear. And let's get technical up in here, man. I've already prepared all of the jazz that we're going to need for today's episode. Droppers, trap chests, hoppers, redstone torches, repeaters, comparators. I had to go to the nether to get a bit more nether quartz to make these comparators. And I turned a bunch of our iron um, into hoppers. Luckily, we have a ton of iron in uh, the storage rooms of the, the uh, Molehole Castle. And of course, we have a ridiculous amount of wood um, from the groves. So making those hoppers wasn't too bad. But we have used up quite a lot of our redstone now um, even though we still have quite a lot left we're slowly but surely making our way through those resources which is kind of cool because we've been collecting them for like four years now and we're actually making use of them now which is awesome now let's get busy trying to figure out exactly how this build is going to be functioning let's take this one step at a time my friends this is probably going to be one of the most complicated redstone constructions that i've built in the series to date so i'm thinking let's do this one step at a time together and that way we're not going to make any mistakes or well that's the plan anyway now the very first step that we need to do is find a way to get the items out of this chest and into the sorting system in the lumber mill of course the chest chest cart is delivering all of the goods from the grove into this chest via a hopper and what we could do then is install some sort of way to get the items out of the chest into this hopper which is going to automatically do but then what we need to do is get those items into the lumber mill so we're going to be setting up a little totem pole of droppers to start off with right so holding shift I'm going to place some droppers down like this so that they are facing upwards you can see that their hole is facing upwards just like a so and then we're we're going to place the final dropper facing this way okay so that the theory is the items are going to hit that hopper hit the chest hit this hopper get dropped into the the brain of this dropper and then the, we're going to find a way to trigger the items to get spat out of this dropper and into the sorting system of the lumber mill so that's the plan let's just go and sleep this night away just so that we don't get any undead freaking apocalyptic guys happening in mole city <laughs> there we go just have to always keep our eye out though um, for any zombies that may have spawned in the darkness by the way still getting used to the trees in mole city uh, thanks to all of you guys who have been leaving feedback it's kind of 70 percent to 30 percent in favor of keeping the trees i know that some of you guys don't like the trees but the majority of you guys do like the trees so that's pretty cool i'm just going to let them stew for a while okay and, and we'll um we'll sort of think about them over the next couple of episodes and make a call on them um, in the future but anyway, my friends, let's carry on over here. Now, the next step is to install another input. So what I mean by that is I would like to find a way to be able to add items into the system from the lumber mill. So say, for example, I come here with a whole bunch of wood and I want to deposit it into the lumber mill. I want to be able to do that. And what we could do is install a chest like this. And let's stick a hopper under this chest going into this dropper like that. Now, anything that we stick in here, so for example, a spruce wood, um, a spruce wood log into that chest is going to go into this hopper. It's going to get sent into this dropper. But of course, without any sort of trigger, it's not going to move around. So the next step that we're going to have to try and figure out is how to get these this totem pole of droppers moving the items around the loop that we are creating over here. OK, so that's looking pretty sweet. Now, the next step are my friends. Oh, my goodness. So many steps. <laughs> the next step is to try and figure out exactly the layout for the lumber mill um, from the chest's perspective. OK, so why don't we add a little break like this? Is this? Oh, this is spruce wood. Um, dang it. I wanted it to be dark oak wood. All right. Let's get some dark oak wood logs up in here. I don't think the spruce wood log... Um, it looks very nice. I think it's there's too much white in it. It looks a little bit, a little bit nasty, if you ask me. Um, there we go. Check it out. All right, that's looking better. Sweet. So let's just add a couple of pillars like this, right? Just so that we can get an, an idea of what we are working with over here. Okay, sweet. Now the next step that we want to be doing over here, guys, is finding a way to deliver these items from this dropper into the various chests that are going to be uh, hanging out over here. 
Let's just go and get ourselves a few... Um, hmm. Shall we try use some polished die right here for this next step? Let's let's just have a look. Let's have a look how it's going to look. So let's add some polished die right uh, like this. And the idea is that we're going to have different chests for different items. Okay, so let's just lay down a couple of chests like this. Let's lay down our first six chests. So let's say that these chests are going to be responsible for um, the logs that come from the grove. Okay, so these are going to be collecting the logs. Now, how are we going to get the items from that dropper, which is collecting the items from this chest and from this hopper? How are we going to get those items into these chests? Well, we are going to be using a system of hopper pipes to transport those items from this dropper all the way into these chests. So check it out, right? Let's just make ourselves a little... Um, hmm. How do we do this again? Um, oh, no, no, it's like this. Okay, so check it out. We're just going to make ourselves a little something like this. This will all become clear in a second. And we are going to start laying down some hoppers facing in this direction. Okay, so let's just lay down a whole bunch of hoppers like this all the way along. And of course, items now coming out of this hopper are going to travel along these hoppers in this direction. Okay, so now we've got the items flowing from our tr uh, dropper totem pole towards the chest that they need to go into. Next step, of course, is getting those items into the chest. So, let's get ourselves a couple of birchwood stairs. And I think I've got some item frames. Yeah, I've got some item frames here too. Okay, sweet. So what we, of course, want to do is to be able to see what items are going into what chest. And you know what? I think we're probably going to have to make these double chests too. Um, so let's make these, oops, no, that is cute, but it is wrong, and it started raining again, dang it! <laughs> Freaking rain, always raining up in my jazz when I'm trying to craft over here, guys. Um, alright, well let me get these chests sorted out, man, I am derping something crazy, and I'm gonna wait for the rain to go away, I'll bring you guys back in a second. All right, the sun is rising. I have slept the night away. The rain has cleared and we can carry on with our technical build. As you guys can see, I made a little bit of progress. I've added the different log types into item frames on the back of stairs here. And I've used stairs over here, of course, so that we can open up the chests. Uh, it would be kind of pointless if we couldn't open up the chests once all of these items have been sorted. But so far, so good. It's been pretty easy to do so far. Absolutely no snags as of yet. Of course, the next step is to find a way to automate this little totem pole so that we can start delivering items into the chest. Now, what we're going to have to do is use a few more hoppers um, over here and a few more uh, a few more stairs. I'm just going to add another layer of stairs like this. And now what we're going to be doing is installing hoppers into the back of these stairs. Now, it doesn't matter that these hoppers are um, facing the stairs or connected to the stairs. They will still suck um, items down from the top hoppers, which is basically just what we need them to do and then we don't want them to be delivering any of the items into anything so that's why we are sending it into the stairs so that so the item will stay inside of the hopper the next layer of hoppers that we are going to install we are going to install into the back of our chests now what's going to happen is the items are going to flow from the, the top hoppers into the second layer of hoppers into the third layer of hoppers and then those hoppers are going to send those items into the chests and I hear a freaking spider spitting around here Dude, you are distracting my butt and I am going to wreck you something fierce, man. Stop your damn whistling. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so this is looking good. Okay, so we've placed all the blocks now. There's no redstone involved just yet. Mostly because I'm kind of nervous and kind of scared. I'm hoping that I can actually remember um, how this redstone works. So, guys, let's get going with a little bit of redstone, okay? Um, I'm going to just add a block of polished die right underneath here just to complete the look, make it look a little bit of awesome. Now, the next step that we need to do is to find a way to trigger this totem pole. And what this totem pole needs to do is deliver items from this uh, dropper into this dropper into this dropper. Of course, because this dropper is receiving the items from our input chest over here. And the second thing that we need to do, of course, is get this dropper up here uh, triggering when it has items inside it so that it can start delivering those items um, into the hopper. So here's what we are going to be doing. I'm going to have to lay down a few dark oak wood planks. Of course, in this series, whenever we work with redstone, we put redstone on top of dark oak wood uh, planks because I, I just really like the way that redstone uh, 
dust looks on the plankage. That's pretty much the only reason. Um, and now we're going to start using and working with some of these machines. So the first thing that we need to do is install a comparator over here. This comparator is looking at this second dropper over here. That is going to go into a block. Um, we're going to use some bl uh, blocks of iron for this. For no other reason uh, than to make it look cool. <laughs> That's the only reason that I use blocks of iron in these kind of builds. Um, but there we go. Now the next step is we need another block of iron over here. And a, a redstone repeater on top of it like so. And another block of iron over here. Now, what we need to do is lay some redstone cabling or some redstone dust like this. Um, oh, sorry, I, I think we need another repeater actually. Yeah, we need another repeater over here like this. And then we need to connect this up like this. Now, what we have basically done here is set up a loop. All right, let's see if I can actually explain this without a derpin. Every time an item goes into this dropper, which is happening every single time an item is delivered into it from this hopper, this comparator is going to trigger a red, redstone signal, which is then going to send a redstone signal into this repeater, thus triggering the second dropper. Now the second dropper is then going to push its item into this dropper and this dropper is going to be getting a redstone signal from this block, thus triggering itself and spitting the items into the hoppers. Basically what's going to happen is this dropper is going to push its item into this dropper, this, this dropper is going to push its item into this dropper, and then this dropper is going to push its item into the hoppers which are, are then going to be sending those items along um, the hopper canals over here, right? So that's how it, how it works in essence. Now, we're going to have to freaking test this jazz out to see if it actually works. So let's throw a little bit of spruce wood leaf action in here and have a look if our redstone circuitry is actually triggering over here. It looks like it's not triggering for some reason. Um, oh, it's because I've used the wrong dang thing. This is supposed to be a, um, a comparator. Oh, that's my bad. Okay, there we go. Now it's triggering. <laughs> so you can see how the circuit works, right? Every single time an item uh, goes uh, passes into this dropper, it triggers the comparator, which then does a little bit of a redstone signal, um, which triggers this dropper, which then tri sends its items into this dropper. And we should see all of those items have probably traveled into this hopper system over here, perhaps into this chest, or, or probably into the very first chest actually. Yeah, they've gone into the very first chest over there, okay? So, our system is working. Uh, our, our droppers are delivering items into our hopper chains, but the hopper chains are, are going pretty much like this. The item goes into this hopper, then into this hopper, then straight down into this one, into this one, and into that chest. What we have to try and figure out now is a clever way to, to create filters inside of these hoppers, which is going to be the next step for this technical build. Oh baby, we are making some pretty good progress over here, guys. I am super stoked that I haven't made any serious errors so far. The only mistake was making this a repeater instead of a comparator. But we are on to the next step of the project and uh, things are gonna get a little bit complicated here, my friends. Engage your freaking brains, man. I hope you got some coffee to hand because this is gonna get quite complicated. Now the next step of the sorting systems project is trying to find a way to filter the items inside of our hoppers. Of course, we want to only be sending the different log types into these chests and uh, we have to find a smart way to do that. Now the first step of this uh, process is adding some redstone torches underneath the last chain of hoppers over here. So we're going to do that. Let's add a few redstone torches like that and uh, let's just get some dye right down here just so that we make the place look beautiful, okay? For no other reason than just keeping the place looking neat. Okay, so we've got our, our redstone torches uh, over here. I'm gonna explain to you guys exactly what that's all about um, in a moment. Now, the next step um, is installing some comparators into the backs of um, our second layer of hoppers. So what we're gonna be doing is adding a layer of blocks like so, hopping up like this, and getting our redstone comparators out, and we're literally just going to add a comparator into the back of each of these hoppers in the second row of uh, hopper chain over there. Um, now we're gonna have to carry on building the foundations over here. So let's just get these blocks down. Mm, okay, 
I'm ready to engage. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We've added comparators into the back of each of these hoppers in the second chain. We've added our redstone torches underneath the final uh, hopper chain um, in the sorting system. And now what we need to do is get our redstone repeaters out. I'm gonna try and explain to you guys exactly what all of this is about in a, se in a second. And we are going to be installing our redstone repeaters facing into the block that has the redstone torches in it, okay? Then we're going to be adding some blocks on top of those repeaters like so and then we're going to get our redstone dust out and we're literally just going to lay the dust down thick just like this now essentially what we are trying to do here is monitor what is going on in this hopper and this hopper okay so the comparator is going to be watching what is going on in this hopper and when um, that this hopper reaches a certain criteria it is going to trigger a redstone signal which is going to um, basically turn this redstone torch off um, which is going to thus stop the hopper actually moving stuff through. So let me try and break it down for you um, exactly how this is going to work because we're going to install our filter system now into our hoppers. Okay, so let me try and explain to you guys exactly how this filtration system works. I hope that I'm not going to derp it up, um, but let me give it a go, okay? Do let me know if I make some mistakes. Um, right now, the way that it's currently set up, you can see that this comparator is not actually running, and that's of course because there's no items in this hopper. As soon as items arrive in this hopper, this comparator is going to be sending off a redstone signal. Now, there is a redstone torch underneath the final hopper here, which of course is sending a redstone signal into this hopper hopper and this hopper is thus not doing anything because it's been turned off by this redstone signal. Now what we want to do um, to make sure that the items pass from th this hopper into this one into this one and eventually into the chest is we want to turn off the redstone signal going into this hopper so that it can deliver the whatever's inside of it into the chest. Now the way that we're going to do that is by setting up a number filter into the second line of hoppers and a number filter works as thus. We're going to add 22 items into this hopper um, and as you can see there we go 22 items are now in this hopper and as you can see we are now triggering a redstone signal um, you can see that there's a little bit of redstone happening over here but it is not actually doing anything to this redstone torch as soon as we add more items so let's add all of the oak wood logs into here what you can see is the comparator is sending signals into this block via the chain here via this repeater and as those items are passing through every single time the item passes through um, it is triggering another little pulse and that pulse is turning off that redstone torch and while that redstone torch is off this hopper is delivering the items into the chest um, over there so that is pretty much how the system works how the number filtering system works and all we need to do now is set up the same filtering for all of our hoppers here in our hopper chain. So um, we're going to do exactly the same with spruce wood logs over here, which I seem to have dropped out of my inventory for some reason. So let's just get our spruce. Do we have our birch? Yeah, we got our birch over there. So we're going to do exactly the same in this one. So we're going to add an item into each of the hopper spots over there. And then we're just going to drop um, 18, 18 items into the the, the last space over here and now of course when we add some spruce wood into there you can see that it got pushed down into the hopper below it now we're going to have to do exactly the same for this one but this time of course using some birch wood uh, or birch logs rather so just like that let's just get this all the way up to 18 just like that and now i can't remember what the configuration was over here it was acacia dark uh, jungle acacia dark jungle okay so the next one over here is going to be acacia one into each of these spaces um, and then 18 into this one so let's get that up to 18 okay and the, the it was acacia dark so one into each of these and then 18 into the last one and the last one was of course jungle so let's get those in there um, 18 into the jungle so now our filters are set up and you can see all of the comparators have turned on all of the redstone is a glowing and we can probably see a couple of the items have already been added into this chest yeah dark oak wood in there acacia in there birch um, spruce and oak okay excellent so it looks like it's working 
The only way, of course, to test this completely is to drop some logs into the system and make sure that they are going in there. So let's add all of the logs that we have in our inventory into the this delivery chest or this input chest. And what we should see is our redstone circuit uh, pulsing away. There we go. This dropper should be filling up. Uh, it's filling up so quickly that you can't even see it. So you can see that it's passing through very, very quickly. Now, the items are traveling along this, these hoppers over here. Now, if there is, say, for example, a jungle log, it's going to go to the, this hopper. See that it can't go down because it doesn't have a jungle wood log in here. Uh, it's going to pass into this one, the same thing's going to happen, into this one, the same thing's going to happen, etc, etc, until it finds the place that it can pass through, which of course is the last one. So that is how the filtration system works, my friends, and it seems to be working a freaking treat. Uh, now, the only way to make sure that it is working is to check out, okay, our 40 logs in there, spruce, birch, acacia, dark oak wood, and jungle wood so it's working beautifully the last one to be transporting is birch wood so that's amazing guys our filter system is now functioning and i am super happy about that all we have to do now is extend this whole system in this direction to include all of the different items that we can get from the grove so leaves saplings and probably the the plank types too and then apples and vines also and extend the whole system in that direction um, and yeah, once that's done, then the whole system is going to be set up. Oh, baby, this is turning out sweet. Well, I'm making some pretty good progress on doing the block grinding over here, guys. Just placed all of the chests that we need. So chests for leaves, saplings, logs, and then apples, vines, and anything else. And I'm just currently working on the back here to get these stairs installed um, onto the back of each of these chests so that we can see what items are being put into what chests. But as you guys can see, man, this building is turning out to be pretty damn huge. Uh, much bigger than I actually thought it was going to be. It's pretty much taken up most of the Viking district, which is kind of cool though. Like, I'm, I'm okay with that, man. This is going to be a really useful building for us because this is going to be the place where we get wood from. Anything wood related is now going to be stored right here in Mall City, and it's going to be awesome. Nice, my friends. That's all of the item frames installed in exactly the same configuration. So oak, spruce, birch, acacia, dark oak wood, and jungle. That's looking pretty sweet. Now we just have to do the last three, which is apples, vines, and a bucket or a recycle bin. I suppose that this is going to be collecting any of the other items um, that might be dropping in there. But as you guys can see, we now have places for logs, planks, um, leaves, <laughs> saplings, and then the other stuff that we can get from the grove. Isn't that freaking awesome? Oh man, that is so sweet. Now, the next big task that I have to do here, guys, is to wire up all of the hopper chains, as well as all of the redstone stuff over here, but it's literally just um, rinsing and repeating um, exactly the same thing that we did in the, in the first half of this episode. So it shouldn't be too difficult to do. Um, let's start all the way on this side with making the hopper chain over here. The interesting part is when the hopper chain is going to go around the corner over here. So before I kick this sucker back into fast forward, I want to show you guys exactly how that's going to work because it's kind of cool. All right, let's lay down a long, long hopper chain over here. Um, and you know what, guys? This system is actually not that difficult to install. Like once you know how it works, all you need is a ridiculous amount of iron and a ridiculous amount of wood. 
and also quite a lot of redstone uh, to be able to put it together. But you could make a system like this for all of the items in your world. I mean, it, you don't have to restrict yourself at all, um, which I think is pretty awesome. Now, let's just try and figure out how exactly we are going to be going around the corner over here. I think we'll probably have to set up another pillar over here, I suspect. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have to have some scaffolding over here, I think, too, just so that we can walk around and place these hoppers in the correct configuration. Let's just get rid of this so that we can see what we're working with. Okay, so wheat. Um, and yeah, it looks like we'll have to do this, of course, to get the hopper chain started. There we go, so wheat. Now we're going to get this one to that position, I think. And then two more hoppers like this. Um, there we go. That should do it. Now the items are going to be able to travel along this top hopper chain. You can see they're all traveling along the, this hopper chain until they find the correct chest for them. And as soon as they find the chest that they love, they drop themselves into it, man. That's pretty much how the system works. Awesome. Let's get the rest of these damn hoppers installed. Man, that is a lot of hoppers. Damn. <laughs> it's looking pretty sweet, though. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying doing this, guys, even though it's kind of grindy. Um, and, you know, I've got to place a ton of blocks that are pretty much all exactly the same. I'm having a ton of fun putting this build up. It is really, really cool. Um, there's just a few things that I need to sort out over here, man. Some OCD is kicking in. We can't have these sort of holes, you know, sticking out in the system. Just got to make sure that everything is plugged. Everything is looking awesome. Even if we will never see the, the, the blocks in the back of the build, I don't know, man. Something in my soul just forces me to make sure that everything is perfect. Are you guys the same? I'm pretty sure that there's a ton of you guys out there who are, who are exactly the same. And it's not very good for our brains, I must say, to have all of this OCD. But anyway, anyway, let's get all of the hoppers now installed underneath, um, or, sorry, all of the redstone torches underneath the final hoppers, which we need to do. And we don't need to have the redstone torches in these um, off positions here. So let's just get rid of those. Um, there we go. And now we can lay some polished diorites also just to complete the look, make sure that it's looking absolutely spiffy. There we go, looking sweet. All right, so next up is laying all of the comparators and uh, the redstone repeaters, which is kind of cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to this part, man. It's going to be pretty cool. So let's get down all of the dark oak wood logs like this. Um, of course, we have to do this around the corner also. I'm, I'm going to do this last because I have a feeling, my friends, that we've got a problem. <laughs> we've run out of space. Oh man, I don't even want to think about it now though, because uh, it's hurting my soul. Just just contemplating the idea that we have run out of freaking space. Oh no, guys. I think it's happened though, um, and we might have to move the Great Railway Line there, um, or perhaps build over it. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to figure that out at some other point. But let's get this freaking system working before we start messing with the rest of our city, correct? Yeah. <laughs> Comply of! Oh, we are getting there now, cyber dogs. Check this out. Oh, no, let's just make sure we don't unconfigure any of these comparators or repeaters. I just really hope that I haven't derped and that I have set all of these things up correctly because that will be a painful process to basically undo all of this to find something that I may have broken. But I'm pretty confident that I have set everything up very, very nicely over here, my friends. I had to do a lot of the stuff off camera, of course, because it takes a long ass time. It's just a bunch of grinding, just placing down the same blocks over and over again. But as we can see, 
the, it is starting to look pretty damn sweet. We've got one more block to work with over here, which is going to be the wall of the lumber mill. We are so tightly squeezed in here, man. It's pretty crazy. Uh, now, the real problem is going to be this side, because this is the wall, but we still need two blocks worth of space behind the hoppers to install the uh, cabling and stuff. So that's not cool, man. Ugh, that is not cool. I don't know how we're going to do this, guys. I'm going to have to spend a little bit of time uh, off camera right to try and figure out how to do that jazz. But you know what? Let's do the final bit of configuration for this first section of the lumber mill. So for the planks, the leaves, and the saplings. And then we're going to test the system out uh, before heading over the t to the dog alert. It's probably going to be a multi-episode um, <laughs> project. I was hoping to be able to do it in one episode, but it's actually taken quite a long time. Anyway, guys, let me get all of the hopper filters installed, and I will come back at you in a second. Jeez, this build is a butt ton of grinding, my friends. This is absolutely crazy. Anyway, I've got 22 plankages, 22 leaves, 22 saplings. I can now get all of our uh, hopper filters installed here. And I've tried to arrange them in exactly the same way every single time so that um, I get it right. I don't even have to think. So, oak spruce birch acacia oops no nope, this is wrong this is cute but it is wrong there we go acacia dark oak wood and some jungle wood mm -hmm. now we just have to repeat the same for leaves and saplings Alright, last hopper to be configured. 22 items in the hopper. Oh my freaking goodness, my friends. All of our hoppers have now been configured, which is awesome. Well, all of the hoppers except for the last three on the end there, but I'm kind of ignoring those. Check it out. I don't, I'm going to hide behind this pole so I don't have to look at them. We'll deal with that at some other point. But anyway, all of these hoppers are now configured, my friends, which is amazing. Now, the only way, of course, to test this system is to drop a whole bunch of items into it. Uh, and of course, only the items that we have configured to be filtered. So let's get as much plankage, logs, leaves, uh, and saplings as we possibly can out of these chests. Yeah, let's get all of these birch, oak wood logs, and all of this stuff, man. Get it all out of here. So wheat, and we're gonna be dropping this into both of these chests. We haven't actually tested this chest yet. So why don't we start up there, okay? Let's drop a whole bunch of these items into there. And we can actually see, is it working? Um, it looks like it's working. It's going into this hopper. Okay, that's fine. But the hopper isn't triggering until we actually put some items into this, the delivery chest. So let's fill up this um, input chest full of jazz. We should now see our redstone circuit triggering away. A beautiful stuff. Yes, absolutely awesome. Let's have a look at our dropper. It is functioning, which means it is sending items into our hopper chains over here. And hopefully, if all goes well, all of those items should end up inside of these chests. Um, have we dropped everything in there? Yes. And I think we've probably dropped one of each item type that we are sorting over here. You know what I've just realized though, guys? What we don't have in this um, sorting system is slabs and stairs, which is <laughs> kind of annoying. Um, but I'm not going to think about that now, okay? This has been a super complicated build. It has come together pretty beautifully. And I'm just going to think about that at some other point, okay? For now, I just want to make sure that our sorting system is functioning correctly. If we just run along this redstone, it looks like everything is working uh, beautifully. Yes, it doesn't look like there's any trigger problems going on over here. Wonderful. Now, let's go sleep this night away. By the time we get back, all of those items should be freaking sorted, hopefully. All right, this is the test. Oh, man, I'm super excited. Any zombies? No, nope, everything is cool. Um... All right, let's have a look, man. It's still triggering. It's still triggering away. So we still have a bunch of items to get through. Okay. All right. 
I'll bring you guys back when this has actually been done. Well, my friends, it looks like the loop has come to an end, which means all of the items that could have been delivered have been delivered. Let's just check our droppers. Okay, there's one bit of acacia wood stuck in here, but that's all right. There's only one test that we can do to see if this actually worked, guys, and that is to open up the chest. Okay, so spruce, a birch, acacia, dark oak wood, jungle, should be oak, should be um, spruce, birch, acacia, dark oak wood, jungle, yes, it's all good so far, um, uh, oak, spruce, birch, acacia, dark oak, jungle, yes, okay, one last thing to test, oak, spruce, um, birch, acacia, dark oak, and nothing, no jungle, hmm, Maybe that's because we didn't add any jungle in there? Right, I'd like to know how many of you guys out there have spotted the problem with our current system. And I'm sure that you guys who have spotted the problem spotted it from the very first second of this video when we started working on this project. Unfortunately, the problem that we have, guys, is that if we add items into this top chest, for example, items coming from the grove, they are not going to get taken out of this dropper because, of course, we need to trigger this dropper somehow. We're only triggering this dropper when we add stuff into this input chest. So we're going to have to figure out a clever redstone loop or something, guys, to be able to trigger the hopper uh, when it receives items from the top. If you guys could help me out with that, that would be amazing. <laughs> my, ex my redstone skills basically comes to an end right here. Um, I don't know exactly how to do that problem over there, guys. But listen, we've got one more test to solve. Let's put our jungle saplings into the input chest. That should be triggering everything just fine. And this is for the, the, the final part of the test that we just ran. Let's see if the jungle wood saplings are actually going to arrive in this large chest. And they do, which is excellent. So... The chains are working correctly, our hopper filters have been installed correctly, but we've got a pretty major problem. How are we going to get this dropper to trigger when items are delivered into its brain from the top hopper and chest? I'm going to hope you guys can help me out with that one in the comment section, man. <laughs> Much appreciated. Well, after a super technical episode, my friends, I am very happy to be right here on the Dogolith, somehow hanging onto this ladder with my butt. Uh, but anyway, I've got eight more of you guys to add on to the Dogolith for today's episode. Starting with YouTube subscribers, we have got CS Benz Nana 8, Ed Smith, Mike Plays TV, and Geo Lord Kyogre. <laughs> Welcome to the Dogolith, my friends. You've been immortalized in the interbubs forever. And now, from Dogcraft.net, the official Cyber Dog fan community, we have got Connell Lewis, Pikmin Ghost, J Dog Red, and Reeve192. Welcome, my friends, to the Dogolith. Thank you for being subscribers. Thank you for being on dogcraft.net and thank you for being such awesome freaking cyber dogs. Remember, guys, if you want to stand a chance of being added to the Dogolith, you need to be a subscriber of the Ren Dog channel and leave me a comment on one of my videos. I choose you guys randomly from those comments. Or you could join dogcraft.net, the official cyber dog fan community. It's a place where cyber dogs hang out. It is the gateway to the official cyber dog nation server, which is server.dogcraft.net free to play for all of you guys out there. Dogcraft.net is where all it is happening. All is happening in the Cyber Dog Nation. But yes, anyway, my friends, I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. It has been awesome. Remember to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, all of that good jazz. In the next episode, we're going to be finishing off this lumber mill. And uh, man, I just cannot wait to see this thing in completion. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, really enjoyed today's technical build, guys. Hope you did too. We will see you all in the next episode.